your saints, we come to the crystallization studies of First and Second Kings, message five. We can all read the topic all together. Natural ability versus the resurrected ability of the maturity of life. For the building up of the church as the organic body of Christ, there are two important things in this topic. The first is a matter of verses. It is the natural ability versus the resurrected ability. And the second thing we have to notice is that the resurrected ability is for building up of the church as the organic body of Christ. Although we don't have the word "natural" in the Bible, the word "natural" here shows us something opposite to the resurrected life. In our natural lives, our capability, our wisdom—all those are from the natural life and have not gone through the process of death and resurrection. Nor are they abilities. Of a mature life, this is the proper comprehension of the word "natural." We can separate this message into four sections, namely the four numer- Roman numerals. The first Roman numeral tells us the last days of King Solomon. In First Kings chapter eleven, we see the fall of Solomon, God's chastisement. For King Solomon and his house, this is the first Roman numeral. And the second section on Roman numeral two tells us about the wisdom of King Solomon, showing us that there is a great difference between the wisdom of Solomon and the wisdom of Apostle Paul, thus showing us one of the reasons to his fall, and. The third point is how the natural ability versus the resurrected ability. The natural ability cannot be used to build up the church as the organic body of Christ. And finally, we have to apply all this to our lives. How can we live and walk in the Spirit? So now we come to Roman number one. It is mainly based on chapter eleven of First Kings. There are three sections in this chapter. The first of which is Solomon's failure, and due to this failure, due to his fall, the second part is God's chastisement, and finally we see his decease. Solomon became a man of wisdom. And a man of understanding. However, because he took many pagan women and worshipped their idols and built places for the people to worship idols, he lost his God-given wisdom and his God-given understanding. He became very foolish and brought in damage to his kingdom. How did a man with wisdom and understanding become foolish? In plain words, he became stupid. From wisdom and understanding to being foolish and stupid, there surely is a reason to this. We can see the reason in First Kings three one. He allied himself by marriage with Pharaoh and took Pharaoh's daughter. And chapter eleven verse one, he loved many foreign women in addition to Pharaoh's daughter. So this is about King Solomon's heart. His heart loved these foreign women. He indulged his lust in these foreign women, and his heart was turned. In verse two, three, four, and nine. It is repeated that his heart was turned away. Therefore, the reason to his being foolish was because he loved many foreign women, who turned his heart away. Therefore, King Solomon's fall can be regarded in five aspects. First, he indulged his lust by loving many foreign women. Second, he has forsaken the God who has appeared to him two times. Third, he worshipped 
Gentile idols through the seducing by the foreign women whom he loved. Before he built up high places for these foreign women, and finally he turned his heart after other gods, even to a point that he built a high place to Chemosh, the detestable thing of Moab in the mountain that is before Jerusalem, and to Molech, the detestable thing of the children of Ammon. And this is something remarkable. Because Solomon, the very one who built the temple according to God's desire on the ground of the oneness of God's people, took the lead to build up the high places once again. It is the same person, the same brain, the same hand, the same wisdom, and the same ability. On the one hand, he built the holy temple, but he also built up high places. This should be a warning to us. Then we should see God's chastisement on Solomon. He lost more than ninety percent of the kingdom. His son Rehoboam only had the tribe of Judah, and had lost ten tribes. And the kingdom suffered division and confusion, and eventually they became captives in Babylon. Solomon's failure is a great warning and an alarm to us. We must be careful. Even a little failure in the indulgence of lust can damage the church life and kill the splendid aspects of the church life. We have to see that God's dealing with us is very detailed, is in a way harsh and serious. We reap the fruit we sow. He is a God who cannot be despised. We see that because of the neglecting of such things by the kings, and not living and walking in the spirit, which result in the dealing and chastisement in his administration by God. King Solomon's disease was in gloomy disappointment. His glory fell off like the flower of grass, and his career became vanity of vanities. As he had preached, Roman numeral two. We need to see Solomon's failure under the light of the spiritual life. Solomon is a wise man. Although he was a wise man, he was not a spiritual man, nor a man of life. His wisdom was absolutely in the physical realm. He wrote three thousand proverbs. And a thousand and five psalms. He can talk about plants, beasts, and birds, from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that shoots forth from the wall. All those are in the physical realm. And Paul's wisdom was true wisdom, which is a spiritual wisdom,、It、is wisdom in resurrection and in mature life. He talks about. Christ making His home in our hearts. Second, our walking and having our being according to the Spirit. And three, the two spirits, the divine spirit and the human spirit, mingled together as one spirit. He is a man with true wisdom. The definition of true wisdom is in First Corinthians one twenty four. Christ is the wisdom of God. In verse thirty says, Christ. Became wisdom to us from God. So this is the true wisdom, the Triune God incarnated in Christ as the wisdom, and was dispensed to us the wisdom to us from God. And because of this wisdom, in Visions two ten we became His masterpiece, and in three ten the church is the expression. Of his multifarious wisdom, so when we put together these verses, First Corinthians one twenty four thirty, Ephesians two ten and three ten, we can truly see a true wisdom. Roman number three shows us the comparison between natural ability and the resurrected ability. There are thirteen subpoints to this outline. Point A to D shows us the natural ability is completely useless in God's building. 
we see its impotence and insufficiency and cannot be trusted. We have to de- reject this natural ability. And there's no place for the natural ability in God's building. It needs to be broken. And from point E to the last point shows us how the natural ability is very different from the resurrected ability. And we can mainly see these things in Moses, Paul, and Peter. We can see that they are all very capable in their natural being. Moses, when he was 40, he struck down an Egyptian with his own strength. And he has obtained all the knowledge and skills in the palace of Egypt. However, God put him in the wilderness for 40 years. The natural ability has to go through death and resurrection to be used by God. Eventually, he could lead the people of Israel out of Egypt and build the tabernacle in the wilderness. It is the same with Paul. He was trained at the feet of Gamaliel and was way more beyond his many contemporaries. His natural abilities were strong. However, in Philippians chapter 3, he said he counted all these things as lost on account of Christ. His natural abilities went through death and resurrection so that he could be for the building of the church and the great mystery of God. Christ and the church can be revealed through Paul and be proclaimed to us. The same is with Peter. He was very capable. He said he was ready to go to prison and to death with the Lord. However, through the questioning of a little servant girl, Peter was exposed to be so weak that he denied the Lord for three times. His natural confidence and ability was brought to an end. Later, the Lord came in to recover his love for him so that he could shepherd his brothers, the saints, and strengthen them and serve them in humility for the building of the church. You can see all the natural abilities have to be brought to death and in resurrection they can be for the building because all natural abilities are selfish. And every natural ability is about the self and pride and is related to expression of flesh. However, in resurrection, an ability can be for the purpose of God and not for the self. It can be for the purpose of carrying out God's will. Just as the Lord teaches about the kingdom in Matthew, our prayers, our alms, and our fastings, they must be done in secret so that we do not show ourselves but we are for God's will and to carry out his economy. Point L, natural ability and capability apart from life are like a snake poisoning God's people. Life is like a dove supplying God's people with life. Therefore, natural ability is like a snake. It is poison to God's people. God's building and his church. However, if we're we're life, we can supply God's people with life. Finally, in Roman numeral 4, the 41 kings of Israel and Judah were in the highest position, but they were not careful in their enjoyment of the good land. We have to pay attention to this not being careful. Not even David enjoyed the good land in the full. We should apply their example to ourselves. 1 Corinthians 10.6 says the things that occurred to the people of Israel are examples to us. The word example means type. 
meaning a symbol with spiritual significance. So these 41 kings are types and symbols. We have to apply their situations to us. In fact, most of them are evil. The root of the evil of the evil kings, according to Jeremiah 2.13, are the two things. First is that they, they are forsaking the very God as the fountain of living waters. Second, they're turning away to the pagan idols as broken cisterns that hold no water. However, we praise the Lord, even though we see the evil roots of the evil kings. In the New Testament, we see Paul as a positive pattern to reign in life. Concerning this matter, we can see several verses for a complete picture of this matter. First is Romans chapter 5.17. In 5.10, it says, When we're being enemies, we're saved in life. And in verse 17, we see in this salvation, we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness so that we could reign in life. And reigning in life, we may describe by Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. This is the experience of the cross. And the second aspect is the experience of the Spirit. In Philippians 1, 19-21, Paul says that through the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, he could live Christ and magnify him. This is our pattern. And we have to see that in resurrection, today Christ became the life-giving spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6.17, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And in Romans 8.4, it says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The pattern of Paul is truly a complete pattern. From Romans 5.17, reigning in life, to Galatians 2.20, being crucified with Christ, to Philippians 1.19-21, enjoying the abundant supply of the Spirit to live and magnify Christ, and 1 Corinthians 6, 17, being joined to the Lord, being one spirit with the Lord. And Romans 8, 4, walk according to the spirit. The spirit here is the mingled spirit. And finally, point E, in the Lord's recovery today, we should pay our full attention to the mingled spirit. The spirit mingled with our spirit and should live, walk, and have our being in and according to this mingled spirit, so that we can truly reign in life. This mingled spirit is the beginning of the body of Christ and will consummate in the new Jerusalem. This message is such a great help to us. God's dealing with His people is with very high standard in a very detailed way. We are sowing in our everyday living, and we reap what we sow. If we sow unto our own flesh, we will reap corruption of the flesh. And he who sows unto the Spirit will reap eternal life. We have to learn the lesson from the kings. We have to sow unto the Spirit in our daily life. That is, to live in our mingled spirit and live and walk according to our mingled spirit and do everything according to our mingled spirit and live in the regulation of the spirit. This way we can truly reign in life. We can only begin in the body of Christ in the spirit and consummate in the new Jerusalem. We praise the Lord for message five. And dear saints, now we come to message 6 of the crystallization studies of 1st and 2nd Kings. 
The topic of message six is very meaningful, although it's it's long. Let's all read the topic together of message six, going on with the Lord from the tabernacle church life to the temple church life for the building up of the body of Christ as the temple of the living God, starting from message six. Including seven, eight, and nine is showing us that the temple Solomon built is a type. The type is about that our church life is for the building up of the body of Christ as the temple of the living God. Message six has a very important burden. It is about going on, dear saints. Our church life needs to go on. I believe that going on is also a natural hope and desire within us. We desire to go forward. We desire to go on. In 1979, Brother Lee released a series of messages, namely the Life Messages. Message 57 is titled "The Good Land and the Spirit," and there's a section. Let's look at Apostle Paul. More than two decades after his salvation, in Philippians chapter three, he says, "To know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if perhaps I may attain to the out resurrection from the dead." The word "attain" here is a kind of spirit to go forward, to go on, to go up. I believe this is very crucial. Hebrews six one says, "Let us be brought unto maturity." So, dear brothers and sisters, as we enter into this message, we have to have this spirit, a spirit of moving on, going forward, and pressing forward. In Psalms, there's a part that is called the Song of Ascents. It is ascending. That is the spirit of our Christian living. So we can take a look at the titles of these messages. Message six says we have to go on. Message seven on the materials of the temple. This is about our experience with Christ, which needs to be deeper, wider, and more. Message eight: growing into a holy temple in the Lord. Message nine: the temple of God filled with the glory of God. All these titles indicate a spirit of going up, ascending, and there should be highways to Zion in our hearts. There are six Roman numerals in this message. The first and the second Roman numeral paints a picture by showing us the type of the tabernacle and the type of the temple. And how could we go on from one to the to the other? And Roman numeral three and four are mainly about building. Roman numeral three shows us that the Gospel of John is the Gospel of Christ's life for the building up of the church. This life is a life that has went through death and resurrection, a multiplying life, a life that propagates. In Roman numeral four, we see two figures, David and, and Solomon. They both typify Christ, the two aspects of God's building. Only Christ can participate in God's building, whereas Roman numeral three tells us the life that went through death and resurrection can be for the building, and the one who can build is Christ. We have to become the corporate Christ. Finally, Rom Roman numeral five and six tells us that from Psalms we see a kind of life in the house of God typifies our church life today and shows us how our church life in the house of God can be for the building. So these are the six Roman numerals. Roman numeral one: the Lord within us. Is aspiring to go on from the tabernacle church life in the wilderness of the soul 
to the temple church life with Christ, the all-inclusive spirit, as the reality of the good land in our spirit. This shows us three aspects of going on. First, we have to go on from tabernacle to temple. Secondly, since the tabernacle is in the wilderness, so we have to go from the wilderness to where the temple is, that is, in the good land. So in our experience, thirdly, in the wilderness, meaning in our soul, we were wandering. And in the good land typifies that we have to turn to our spirit, which is the all-inclusive, life-giving spirit of God as the reality of the good land and as our enjoyment. So all these are the going-ons from the tabernacle to the temple, from wilderness to the good land, and from our soul to our spirit. These are our desires. In our church life, we yearn to gain Christ and gain Him more, to go higher and deeper, more steadfast, more solid, and even richer. These are our desires of going on. Roman numeral 2, the tabernacle and the temple typify two aspects of the church. And 1 Kings 8, 1 to 11 shows that the tabernacle was merged with the temple. The tabernacle was a portable precursor moving in the wilderness. However, the temple is stabilized. It's built on the good land. So it typifies the consummation of God's building. So the merging of the tabernacle and the temple is shown in David's preparation. In 1 Kings chapter 8, we see King Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes. They were there to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah from the city of David. They brought up the Ark of Jehovah and the tent of, tent of meeting and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. Since the tent was being brought into the temple, so the two had merged. We have to pay attention. B, the temple as the enlargement of the tabernacle signifies strengthening and the stabilizing of the church. The tabernacle is movable in the wilderness and not as solid. However, when they were building temple in the good land, it was strengthened, stabilized. And the number and size of the furnishings and utensils, except the ark, were all greatly enlarged. As we know, the vessels in the tabernacle typifies our experience of Christ. The altar has been enlarged. It typifies our experience of Christ's crucifixion. And the table of face bread typifies our experience of Christ as the life supply. And the lampstand typifies our experience of Christ as the light of life. The enlargement of these things indicates our going on in our experience of Christ. We are moving forward with our experience of Christ as the cross, as the life supply, the light of life. Everything is moving forward. And the tabernacle and the temple typifies the two aspects of the church. The tabernacle typifies God's churches in the localities. The temple typifies the reality of the body of Christ. In God's economy, the local churches are the procedure, and the body of Christ is the goal. Concerning the reality of the body of Christ, you can see point G in Roman numeral 2. The testimony of the reality of the body of Christ is God's final recovery the recovery of God's eternal economy. With first, Christ being everything to us. This is opposed to Satan's corruption and chaos, making replacements of Christ. Second is to recover the oneness of the body of Christ. What Satan does is making divisions. Thirdly, to recover all the members of his body functioning. Satan's disrupting work is to Destroy the functions by clergy and laity system. So by going on, not only do we need the building in the local churches as the procedure, we have to press on to attain the reality of the body of Christ.
and to have recovery in these three aspects. To recover Christ as life and everything, and oneness of the body of Christ, and all the members of the body functioning. In Roman number three, we see in the Gospel of John, is that Christ as life for the building up of the church. This is done by our experience and enjoyment of the crucified and resurrected Christ as the tree of life. In chapter two, we see the miracle of turning water into wine. This establishes a principle of life, that is to change death into life. And the second part of chapter two shows us how the Lord was dealing with the temple. The Lord said, "Destroy this temple." The temple here indicates his physical body, which is his crucifixion, and in three days I will raise it up. And that is his resurrection. Although his physical body was destroyed in resurrection, he would build up the spiritual house of God. So we can see the principle of life in the Gospel of John. That is to change death into life. In the second part of this chapter. Tells us the purpose of life. That is built the house of living God. This is the main and central thought of the Gospel of John. And concerning the destruction of our Lord's physical body, this indicates his death on the cross. And this destruction was also the destruction of the devil, who has the power of death. When he died on the cross, the old creation, the old man, the flesh, Satan, sin, sins, and the world were crucified on the cross, and the entire universe had been cleared up. And his being raised up in three days were also his dying as a grain of wheat and resurrecting to bear much fruit. So through his death and resurrection, he has gained an increase. In chapter fourteen, it says. In my father's house are many abodes, and these many abodes are the many members of the body of Christ. And they are also the many grains. In chapter twelve, when we speak of abodes, it's about his body as the temple, and the members are about his organic body. And many grains is the manifestation of the life that went through death and resurrection. And、the resurrected life had also gained an increase and in multiplication. So we have to pay attention in the Gospel of John. The many abodes indicate many members of the body, and this life bears much fruit. The many grace. Oh, this is about life for God's building. And Roman number four shows us the two persons who builds. David and Solomon typify Christ in two aspects for God's building, which means only Christ can be for God's building. Point A: David typifies Christ from his incarnation, with his God-Man living and suffering unto his death, from the manger to the cross. And secondly, Solomon typifies Christ in his resurrection, in glory as the life-giving Spirit in us, speaking God's word of wisdom to, to build up the church as the temple of God. We know that David is a man according to God's heart. He always had a heart to build a house for God. We know that David suffered from his youth. He had went through a very hard. Situation. However, through his suffering, he prepared the materials, and second, he gained the proper ground for the building of the temple, and he prepared Solomon, the builder, and all the helpers, and also he prepared the design for building the temple. And fifth, he arranged in order Israel's service to God related to the temple of God. All these things are David's preparation in First Chronicles. Twenty two fourteen says David says now then in my affliction I have prepared for the house of Jehovah one hundred thousand talents of gold and one million talents of silver. In twenty nine verse two, as much as was in my power, I have prepared for the house of my God. Verse three, I have a private treasure of gold and silver. I give it for the house of my God. 
So David's preparation of building God's house was in his sufferings and with all his strength. Because of this, all the leaders of the tribes of Israel offered willingly for the building of the temple. Although David gained the design and pattern of the temple, the one who ex executed this was Solomon. This is in point I. The blueprint of the church is the spirit of resurrection, the all-inclusive, life-giving, compound, indwelling spirit. When we live in the spirit of resurrection in our spirit, the reality of Solomon's building of the temple according to David's design with all the ingredients of Christ, God, man, living, death, and resurrection is fulfilled within us. So the suffering Christ has the pattern of building the temple. Through Christ in resurrection, the spirit of resurrection, he can build the temple of God. J. Solomon's name means peace, meaning that the church is built by Christ as a man of rest, in peace, without any noise. The church is only built up in peace, like Acts 9.31. But then the church throughout the whole of Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace being built up. This piece indicates that in the process of the building, there is no noise. Because every piece of stone used for the building, the big stones, the precious stones, they are all cut and dealt with in the mountains. This being uh, cut and drilled and processed in the mountains, meaning we have to be dealt with by the Lord. Some people talk incessantly who is not a good listener and who has an unrenewed renewed mind. This kind of person has not been dealt with. So there will be noise of hammer, axe, and iron tool in coordination. There will be a lot of noise. They can fight one another, another in prayer or in prophesying. What would, do we do if we hear others' criticism, judgment, and arguing? We should withdraw into the Holy of Holies. That is, we have to return to our spirit so that the temple is built in quietness. There is no noise of arguing. However, there is the sound of singing. Those whom David set over the service of song in the house of Jehovah, they sang in the temple. So let us all be dealt with in the mountains by the Lord's cutting and hammering so that when we're building up in the church life, there is no noise, only the singings. Finally, in Roman numeral 5 and 6, it tells us how we can be for God's building in the church life in the temple. What are the characteristics of our church life in the temple? Mainly, we can see these items in Psalms, especially chapter 36, 43, 48, 84, and 133, etc. And as we read through these Psalms, we can see the point in Roman numeral 5. God's thoughts and ways to build up the church as the temple of the living God are higher than ours. So we need to forsake our ways and our thoughts and return to Jehovah, our God, to take the way of enjoying Him in the church as the temple of the living God. We think of building the church as God's temple. We think of doing something. However, as we see picture of the church life depicted in the Psalms, they take the way of enjoying, the way of singing and praising. This is very different to our concept. So we have to forsake our ways and thoughts and receive the Lord's ways. So point A, as God's children, we need to change our concept and realize that God's desire is to give himself to us for our enjoyment. So our concept needs to be changed from doing to enjoying. So in our church life, fruit bearing is to enjoy God. In our prayers, ministering the word, preaching the gospel, receiving his leading, are all to enjoy God. 
So the secret of living the Christian life, so that we may be overcomers, is for us to take the way of enjoying God as the tree of life. As we taste of Him in our spirit, we know that He is good. So in all the scriptures and Psalms, it is filled with enjoyment of the Lord. Psalm twenty six. O Jehovah, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory abides. In eighty four, how lovely are your tabernacles, O Jehovah of hosts! So in our church life, in the temple, we taste of Him, we abide in Him, and we enjoy Him. We eat and drink of Him, like in Psalm thirty six. We are saturated with the fatness of your house. Drink of the river of your pleasures, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. All of those things are full of enjoyment. Finally, Roman numeral six, Psalm eighty four. Blessed are those who dwell in your house; they will yet be praising you. Praised, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, in whose heart. Are the highways to Zion? I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise Jehovah while I live. I will sing psalms to my God while I yet have being. So the church life is full of singing and praising. You are holy, you who sit enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Through Him, then let us offer up a sacrifice of praise continually to God. That is the fruit of lips confessing His name. As we read these verses, we will forsake our old ways and thoughts. You have to take the way of enjoying Him, and this way is the secret to our becoming the overcomers. We build up the church as the body of Christ. The saints, let us all press forward from the tabernacle church life to the temple church life. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for this conference that we will see God economy that is hidden within First and Second King. Ah,、uh, through this ministry, we can see the mystery that been hidden in these two book. In message five, we see that natural ability versus the resurrected ability of the maturity of life. For the building up of the church as the organic body of Christ, this message we see that the comparison between two person so- Solomon in the Old Testament and Paul in the New Testament. In Roman Roman one, we see that Solomon he is a man of wisdom and understanding. However, because he took many pagan women. And worship their idol, and build places for the people to worship idol. He lost his God-given wisdom and his God-given understanding. He became very foolish and brought in damage to his kingdom. This is the person that have a lot of ability, or、uh, have wisdom and understanding, but this is natural. Ability that God had given him, but this ability, this wisdom, is not related to life or the growth in life. But we need to see another person, Paul. Paul. In one hand, we can say that from his background, he was so religious and in Jewish religion, and. He was so zealous to, ah,、uh, condemn the church to persecute the church of God. He is full of ability, but ah,、uh, after he met the Lord, ah,、uh, his high ability naturally, ah,、uh, has passed to death and entered into resurrection. So that ability would not be natural anymore, but his ability had passed to death and entered into resurrection. Paul wisdom. Came out from life and the growth and maturity of life. Paul has wisdom. Solomon had wisdom, and Paul has wisdom. Or、uh, how? What is the difference between these two? From Solomon is the natural ability, just like the one who have received the gift 
of doing miracle and can do so many things but this is different from the measure of the growth and maturity in life uh, such the ability cannot build the church and such the ability would be rejected by the body uh, the resurrected ability of Paul came from the growth and maturity in light of Paul. So that's why uh, the 14 epistles of Paul were written uh, by the wisdom in resurrection. And even in his shepherding of the elder in Ephesus or other believer and his services uh, which came out from, from death and entered into resurrection. We need to see the difference between the two persons. And this matter should be the warning to us. In Roman number 2, we need to see Solomon's failure under the light of the spiritual life. We see that Solomon was a wise man. But we also see that uh, his capacity uh, of the growth in life is so little and eventually uh, he was cut off from the enjoyment of the good land because of his unbridled indulgence of his lodge. Uh, Solomon, God-given wisdom, made him great in the world in his day. However, his wisdom was absolutely in the physical realm, without any spiritual element. His wisdom was the shadow of the real wisdom that was to come, and it was altogether different from the wisdom of Paul. Paul's wisdom was a spiritual wisdom concerning Christ, making his home in our heart, our walking and have our being according to the spirit and the two spirit, the divine spirit and the human spirit mingled together as one spirit. This is Paul's wisdom. And Paul's wisdom caused him to understand the mystery of the universe, the mystery of the universe is God, the mystery of God it is Christ and the mystery of Christ is the church and the great mystery is Christ and the church. We need to have the wisdom of Paul so that we will see God's economy and to be unveiled concerning this mystery. Today, if we want to know God's economy, want to know the highest wisdom in this universe, we must get into the crystallization study of the truth in Paul's epistle. The real wisdom is God, who is embodied in Christ. And according to 1 Corinthians 1.30, this Christ is our wisdom to us from God. Our wisdom is not the outward ability that God had given us, but the wisdom in resurrection in light with is Christ himself. Christ needs to become our wisdom. Therefore, this wisdom is Christ himself. And this Christ becomes our wisdom to us, in us, making us one with God and make us godly life in nature, but not in the Godhead. Thus, we become the masterpiece of the triune God, his poem displaying his infinite wisdom and divine design. Amen. Therefore, we need to learn to exercise our spirit because the real wisdom is in Christ as the Spirit who dwell in our spirit, in our service, in the church, in the administration, in coordination. We need to exercise our spirit that this Christ would become our wisdom. If we want to serve the church, we need to be told to read the Word of God, especially the 14th epistle of Paul, so that we would know the highest wisdom and this wisdom is for the building up of the church. Roman number 3. Solomon was a man full of natural ability, but not a man of life. A man whose wisdom was the gift, not a measure of life. The careers he accomplished were evidence of his capacity from the God-given gift of wisdom. Not not manifestation of the ability of the maturity of life. Simply we can say that uh, Solomon's ability is not related to the growth of life at all. It's just 
the uh, God-given gift outwardly. Therefore, the way to build up the church, we need to be broken. Brother Washmany uh, has the book, uh, The Broken of the Outer Man for the Release of the Spirit. The way to build up the church, our natural opinion, our natural ability need to be broken, pass to death and enter into resurrection, and then eventually our service would not depending on the natural ability, but depending on the resurrected ability. In Lom 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 3, we see the difference between our natural ability and the ability that has come out from the maturity of life. We see that the natural ability is the ability that self reliant and self confident and no divine element and unable to withstand taste, setback, or opposition. But resurrected ability extols the Father, acknowledging the Father's will. But if we serve according to the natural ability, when people oppose us, or when the coordination is difficult, we would be discouraged and we could not move on. This is the proof that our servant is still in the natural ability, that is temporarily. Not only that, uh, the serving in natural ability desire, reward, or appreciation from others. This is also from natural ability. We want others to appreciate us or uh, appreciate our service. But when people just uh, oppose us or rebuild us, we would be discouraged and would be offended. But to the Lord's mercy, if we have the resurrected ability, we would not uh, desire for others to appreciate that, but we have only one desire to please the Lord. The natural ability like to manifest itself, but the resurrected ability like to do things in secret, to be one with the God who hide himself, and to take root downward and bear fruit upward. Our living should be like the iceberg, or uh, the visible part at the top of the iceberg. But if you look down, to the unseen underneath the water, or uh, this is bigger than the visible part. So this show that we need to be a Christian that rooted down into Him, or uh, to to take root downward and to grow upward. Amen. May the Lord have mercy on us that we would be enlightened from the Lord that in our service would pass to death to the cross and turn to res resurrection. Now we come to message 6. We need to go on with the Lord. From the tabernacle church life to the temple church life. For the building up of the body of Christ at the temple of the living God. In this message, we see that uh, the tabernacle church life and the temple church life. The tabernacle church life is in the wilderness and the temple is in the good land. In this ministry, help us to see that the tabernacle church life can be compared to the tabernacle in the wilderness, which is related to the first Corinthian. In this book, even though it's in the wilderness, uh, they still enjoy the food of life, the manna, and the water from the spit log, but they have not eat or enjoy the fruit of the good land. But in the good land, it's just like the book of Ephesians and Colossians. Christ is uh, Christ's body, it, his fullness. Uh, there are so many experiences in the book of Ephesians and also in Colossians. Colossians 1 12, the good land is God allotted portion. And Christ is all and in all. We need to progress not only to have the church life in our locality as the tabernacle church life, but we need to move on to enter into the reality of the body of Christ in the book of Ephesians and Colossians. Simply we can say that we need to get out of the wilderness from our soul to enter into the good land in our spirit. And in our spirit, we can have the reality of the body of Christ. In this point, we see that the two aspects of the church are the universal church and the local church. In universal aspect, we need to enter into the reality of the body of Christ. And how do we enter into the reality of the body of Christ? We need the, we need the wonderful process. This is the local church. 
Therefore, today we want to build the church. We need to be in the local church and enjoy Christ, enjoy the rich supply together with the saints. And eventually, we need to become Zion, the reality of the body of Christ in Jerusalem. We typify the local church. Therefore, we need to progress or pass to death until into resurrection. We can become the reality of the body of Christ. And in Roman Road 4, we see David and Solomon typify Christ into aspect of God building. David typified Christ from his incarnation with his God and living and suffering until his death. Solomon typified Christ in resurrection in glory at the light giving spirit and also speaking God's word of wisdom to build up the church at the temple of God. Therefore, we need to experience both David and Solomon. Thank the Lord, the blueprint of the temple had been given to David and passed on to Solomon. Solomon built the, the temple not according to its pavilion, but according to the blueprint given from his father. And this blueprint came from God. Therefore, today we build the church. We need to build according to the blueprint, on, not according to our desire or our prevalent. If we do that, we cannot build a house or the structure or any kind of structure need to be built according to the plan. In I, the blueprint of the church is the spirit of resurrection, the all-inclusive life-giving compound in the spirit. When we live in the spirit of resurrection in our spirit, the reality of Solomon building of a temple according to David design with all the ingredients of Christ, God, my living, death, and resurrection, it fulfilled within us. Simply, if we want to build the church according to the blueprint, we need to live in spirit, according to the spirit. And that is equivalent to the last message. Or uh, We don't depend on our natural ability, but we depend on the ability that is the issue of the growth and maturity in life. The outer man needs to be broken so that the life in the inner man can be released. Amen. Therefore, thank the Lord for the Lord recovery that Brother Watchman through his reading the Word of God, he received the blueprints of the church, or uh, the blueprints of the building of the church. And he passed this blueprint to Brother Witness Lee. At that time, Brother Nee told Brother Lee uh, the blueprint uh, for the building up of the church. In that blueprint, there are three points. The first point is that the only material for the building of the church is Christ. If it is not Christ, it cannot be the material for God building. If it just being something that is not Christ, that would be something that is useless for the building and the organic body will reject it. If this comes from our natural ability or from the gift that comes from a natural ability, that thing cannot build the church. But if that thing is the issue of the enjoyment of Christ and we share Christ to one another, this is the material for the building of the church. The second point, the building needs to be built locally. We are not building the church in the air, but the building is in locality. That means if we say that we want to build the church, but if we cannot coordinate, with the saints in our locality that God put us there, so we cannot build the church. Third, the building is true coordination. If we want to build the church, but if we are just individual Christian, we don't care for other, we pursue by ourselves, and we say that, oh, be with other, there's a lot of trouble. If you are not being to build up with other, you that means you are not in the process. So you cannot arrive at the reality with the, the reality of the body of Christ. Therefore, why when we are together and try to build with one another, but we cannot build up? What is the reason? We need to see point J. Solomon name in peace, meaning that the church is built by Christ as a man of rest in peace without any noise. In principle, Every piece of stone do it for the building of a temple ward in principle already cut and deal with in the mountain. Just 
the sound of hammer axe and iron too was not heard, and the temple was built quietly. If a brother who is not dealt with by the Lord, who talk incessantly, who is not a good listener, and who does has an unrenewed mind, become an elder, the church will be filled with the noise of the hammer, axe, and iron too. Some noise can be certain sent fighting with one another by praying to notify another one prayer. Or since in the church, if we hear altar criticism, we should withdraw into the holy of holy, that it retreat into and turn to our spirit, and the temple is built in quietness. So the the stone needs to be cut and deal with before put into the building. And that means we need to pass to death and resurrection. We can be built up with the sand. But if there's noise, there's a problem. That implies that we have not been dealt with uh, sufficiently from the world. Therefore, we need to be dealt with. And if we are dealt with, we will have no opinion. We have no argument. Then we can be built up peacefully and quietly. Therefore, we need to learn to exercise our spirit to hide ourselves in the spirit. Therefore, we need to experience uh, that our servant would be in resurrection. Then, Roman 5, we need to see that God thought and way to build up the church at the temple of the living God are higher than our. Therefore, we need to forsake our way. Amen. I'm Brother Wu Zhen Chang from the Church of God in Bangkok District 24. Today I'm so joyful to be able to see the history of the Old Testament, King Solomon. In King Solomon's reign, there were times of prosperity. There was also times of degradation. Why there's such a big turn of Solomon? The problem is that with his heart, in his young age, his heart sees God and depend on God. In First Kings chapter three, verse nine, he asked God to grant him understanding and wisdom that he may know how to go out or come in among the people. Verse twelve, God promised him, "I will give you a heart of wisdom, understanding, both riches and glory, so that there will be no one among kings like you all your days." In this way, God blessed the country of Israel and the king Solomon, so that the country of Israel reached the peak age, building the temple in Jerusalem. Hereafter, Solomon's heart was being swayed. He was deceived by Satan severely. Solomon loved many foreign women, letting in the idols. He worshipped idols and set up the high places. This gave a serious trouble to the Israelites, that the country of Israel was divided into two nations the north and the south, and in the end, Israel lost the kingdom. The temple was destroyed, the people were captured, all the riches and glory of this life. Solomon was becoming vanity. This gave a big warning to all the New Testament believers. No matter it is King Solomon or us, we all have the natural man, natural wisdom, natural strength. We must see and deal with this seriously. If we try to spare our naturalness, we might be deviated from the way of life. Just like the king of Solomon, our lives may become vanity. This message emphasized to us that the natural life, natural characteristic, natural wisdom, natural strength, all cannot be used as the building of God. Only the life of God can be counted as genuine life. Only the wisdom of God is the real wisdom. God is being embodied in Christ, and we are also in Christ, that we may become one with God. We, Christian, must live a spiritual life, a living that is one with God. That is to let Christ make home in our hearts. Live by the Spirit. For the church as the building of the organic body of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless us all. Amen. Praise and thanks the Lord. In the message 5 reveals to us about natural ability versus the resurrected ability of the maturity of life for the building up of the church as the organic body of Christ. In Roman number 3 reveals that Solomon was a man full of natural ability but not the man of life. A man whose wisdom was a gift, not a measure of life. 
the carriers he accomplished were evidence of his capacity from the God-given wisdom. Not manifestation of the ability of the maturity of the divine life. Our Lord in Part C reveals that in the Lord's recovery, there is no place for our natural being. The churches in the Lord's recovery, as part of the living body of Christ. We spontaneously reject anything that is natural. In First Corinthians twelve twelve, says that for even as the body is a one and has many members, yet all the members of the body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. The Lord is the head and the body. O Lord, in Roman numeral four, reveals that the forty-one kings of Israel and Judah were in the highest position, but they were not careful in their enjoyment of the good land. Not even David enjoyed the good land in full. We should apply their example to ourselves. O、oh、Lord, in point A, reveal that the root of the evil of the evil king, like that of evil of the people of Israel, was their forsaking the very God as the fountain of living waters, and their turning away to the pagan idols, a broken system that hold no waters. O、oh、Lord, thanks and praise the Lord. In point E, review to us in the lost recovery today. We should pay our full attention to the mingle spirit. The spirit mingle with our spirit, and should live, work, and have our being in and according to this mingle spirit, so that we can truly reign in life. This mingle spirit. Is the beginning of the body of Christ, and we are consumed in the new Jerusalem. Amen. The conclusion for message six: the law within us is aspiring to go on from the tabernacle church life to the temple church life. The tabernacle typifies the church, which can move through the witness of the show, whereas the temple was the consummation of God's. Building, which as the enlargement of the tabernacle, signify the strengthening and stabilizing of the church. So we need to go on with the Lord, experience and enjoy the Christ, the all-inclusive Spirit in our spirit, for the tabernacle church life. The tabernacle typifies His church in the localities that are the. Procedure to bring into the temple the reality of the body. Then the Gospel of John is the picture of life for the building. It is the Gospel of Christ as life for the building up of the church as the temple, the corporate body, and the mystery of the Lord. David typified Christ through sufferings to prepare the materials for the building. Whereas Solomon typifies Christ in his resurrection in glory, as life-giving Spirit in us, speaking God's word of wisdom to build the church, as the temple of God. Today, the Lord needs us to cooperate with Him, be a man according to God's heart, intent to build the temple for God, prepare the materials for the building of the temple. The Lord deal with us. Through affliction and all trials, and experience his victory in his life by knowing him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death to live in his resurrection, and be the proper materials for the building of law. To be Solomon, that means peace, meaning that the church is built by Christ as a man of rest. 
in peace without any noise. Isaiah fifty five nine. God's thoughts and way higher than man's. God is enjoyable for man. God needs man to take the way of enjoy the Lord in the church. Enjoying God through full bearing prayer, ministering the word, preaching the gospel, and receiving His leading. Every day we need to come to the joyful God, and we will praise God. The result is that blessed are those who dwell in your house; they will yet be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Amen.